Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Our job is to consecrate ourselves to God. And if we do that day in and day out, God is going to show up and show off. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is mystery. Win the day. Buenos dias. How is everybody? Good. You guys got a lot of energy. That's good. Uh, well, hey. We're continuing to pray for the folks in our church. A lot of people I know, a lot of you have been uh, affected by COVID. Some of you have had COVID. Some of you are recovering from COVID. Thank the Lord for that. And um, it's, it's been a challenge on our community right now. But man, better days are ahead. I promise it. This isn't the end. So uh, just stay faithful. Stay encouraged. Man, get, sometimes you got to be your own cheerleader, unfortunately. Um, you ever notice that? If you're, if you're counting on somebody else to cheer you up, I have that sometimes with Emily. I'll be like, Emily, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, I'm sorry, I got nothing to give you today. You're going to have to cheer yourself up. Um, so sometimes we got to do that, right? Even when we're expecting our spouse to do that for us, our kids to do that for us. Don't expect the news to do it for you, even your favorite channel. Um, sometimes you got to turn that off and you got to encourage yourself in the Lord. So I want to encourage you with that. Um, this is not the end. It, we'd know if it was the end. Trust me. We'd know if it was the end. It's not. It's just the beginning. And every season that comes, you know, there's a, there's a, a season of, of a winter season before new life comes about. And I think that's what we've been going through all of 2020. 2020, I call it the year of fear. And 2021, I think, needs to be the year of courage. So, um, and I'm, yeah, so let's be courageous this year. And that's part of what we're talking about today in this series, Win the Day. We're talking about making courageous decisions that change our future. And I'm going to tell some, uh, a story this morning kind of about the journey of, that I've been on over the last few years of, of, getting, of writing. And I know that a lot of you say, some of you want to write, but some of you are like, I, I have no frame of reference for writing. But listen, what I'm going to share with you this morning, the principles I'm going to share with you this morning, I want you to, to not get hung up on my story. I want you to focus on your story and how they apply to your story. Because what I'm going to share, I'm going to share uh, three key principles this morning that could literally change the way you do everything if you will put these into the play. And I've put them into play in my life. That's what I'm going to share in this writing journey that I've been on. Um, but you got to put them into play. So this morning, we're going to talk about the price of success. And here's the thing about success. Success is a direction, not a destination. Okay. We get hung up on, oh, I'll be successful when I've got this, this, and that, or I'll be successful once this happens, or how much I've got this much in the bank, or once I feel this way about life. Success is a direction. Jesus said this, if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all the things you're looking for, they're going to fall into place. And the thing that you've got to do is you've just got to make sure you're focused on the right thing. And the, the right thing to focus on is Jesus. We're going to talk about that a verse in a second in Hebrews about a way he lived that's just it's, it's an example for us about how we can live and how we can literally win the day. So start off my story. Uh, about 12 years ago, I really felt called to start writing. And I didn't know, uh, I, thought, I thought I had stuff to write. And I sat down and started writing and I was like, wow, this is a lot harder than I thought. And you ever gotten into something you're like, this is a lot harder than I thought. Because, you know, people that are experts at something, they make it look easy. But the reason they make it look easy is because they put a lot of work into it. So that's one of the challenges is you think it's going to be easy. Well, I got into writing and um, I wrote a book and I sent it to somebody, a friend of mine. He's like, oh, I'd love to read your book. And I didn't hear from him for like two weeks, didn't hear from three weeks, four weeks. Finally, I wrote him. I said, hey, did you read my book? And he goes, um, yeah, I, I started, but it's kind of long. <laughs> I was like, Okay but did you read it? He's like, no, bro. I honestly, I don't think I'm going to be able to finish the book. I just got a lot going on. I'm like, <sighs> so I sent it to another friend. She read it and she was like, this is nice. This is nice. This is nice. <laughs> sent it to another friend. He wouldn't read it. He's like, bro, I just don't have time to read it. He's like, I thought I would, but when I saw it, I didn't have time. And so I'm like, clearly what I'm writing is not engaging people because if it was engaging people, they'd keep reading it, right? That's the way it is. If people want something, they go after it. Anyway, a little dating advice if you're trying to get that person to, <laughs> if they want you, they'll go after you. If they ain't going after you, you need to move along. Anyway. <laughs> but I kept writing and I kept writing and I kept getting frustrated. I'm like, what's going on here? And, and, and this is what I, I remember thinking. I'm trying, 
but nothing is changing here. <laughs> and here's what I know about you guys. You've got something in your life right now that you're saying, man, I'm trying, but nothing is changes, changing. Some of you, you're trying to get your health under control. You know you need to drop that weight, right? Let's just be honest. Some of you know it's not good for you. Your doctor has said it's not good for you. Some of you know you've got a habit that's not good for you and you've, you've just given up on trying. You're just like, well, I'll just lower my standards. But sometimes we're lowering our standards quicker than we can. We can't even lower our standards fast enough to keep up with ourselves, right? So this is what happens. And we get overwhelmed and we get, man, I just, oh, I'm trying, but nothing's happening. Maybe you've been trying to change your diet, but it's really hard because of your work schedule. And you're just like, man, it's just so convenient that fast food right next door. And I've only got a 20 minute lunch break, really, because my boss freaks out if I take 30. And you're like, and man, it's just so much easier to get that. And you're, you're struggling with your health. And you know, it's, it's, it's literally killing you, some of you, right? Some of you, you've been trying in that relationship to get it fixed. You're like, man, I've tried everything. I've read books and it's not working. Some of you, your marriage is the same thing. Like, man, I've read every marriage book and it's not working. I went to marriage seminars. It's not working. Anybody relate to this? Go ahead and raise your hand. Let's commit here. I'm trying, but nothing is changing. Anybody feel that way? Okay, let's be honest. The rest of you are lying. <laughs> or you just got lazy, which happens. You get tired and you're like, forget this. What's the point? Some of us are there. Like, what's the point of even trying? Nothing's changing. Well, let me start with some kind of, I'm going to start with a, a punch in the face. And rather than me punch you in the face, I'm just going to pop a quote up here. Okay, because when I read this quote, I was like, oh, snap, this is so accurate. You've gotten to where you are right now by doing whatever it is you're doing. So if you're less than impressed with your current situation, you clearly need to change things. <laughs> now, if nothing changes, nothing changes. That's deep, right? Nothing changes, nothing changes. So we're going to talk this morning about how to start changing things. And I'm going to give you a really simple three-step way to make some changes in your life that will add up. Because here's the thing about change. Small changes over time and commitment to them create large changes over time. And what happens for most of us is we're so focused on the big change that needs to happen that we lose sight of the small changes we have the power to make right now. And here's the really cool part about it. God wants to give you the grace right now to take the step in front of you. And oftentimes the first step, that's not true. Oftentimes the first 10 steps are the hardest. I was about to say the first step's the hardest, but actually it's about first 10 or they're really hard. But once you get past that and you get in motion, you get the momentum going. We talked about that last week, the momentum element of the kingdom of God. Stuff starts to change. So Paul He's talking about this. And he says, guys, listen, if you really want to win at this Christian faith, if you really want success, I need you to start looking at your life in this way. Don't you realize that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. We're going to go back to that line in a second. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that won't last. Back in the day when you'd won the Olympics, you'd win this crown, but it was a crown of, of like roses and flowers and, and eventually the thing would you know, fade, right? They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we're doing what we're doing to get a crown that will last forever. The one that Jesus is gonna put on your head when he says, well done, good and faithful servant. You made it, man. And you, not only did you make it, you overcame down there while you were down there. So I don't run like somebody running aimlessly. I'm not just kind of, oh, ho, oh, joy jogging. No. I don't fight like a boxer beating the air. Sometimes I watch these people at the gym and I'm like, I wonder how that's working out for you. And they're like, you know, hitting that boxing thing. I'm like, oh, man, I'm sure that's burning calories. But then I see other guys that are in there and they're like, you're like, Whoa. They're burning some calories, right? He's like, I don't just so sit around kind of poking at the air. Nope, I strike a blow to my body. Another translation says I discipline my body. And I, didn't, I chose this translation because nobody likes the D word, right? Discipline. Ugh. I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Here's step one that Paul's saying here. He says, listen, run in such a way as to get the prize. Saying this, 
you got to fully commit if you're going to do this. And, and, and here's the reality. If we're honest with ourselves, some of the things we say we're trying, but nothing's changing, we haven't actually fully committed to, have we? That's true. I don't do pre-marriage counseling, but I did a few sessions before. <laughs> and and I, I often thought, I thought, wouldn't it be weird if somebody came into me and said, hey, man, I'm so excited about getting married. Um, and I love her just so much, but I just want to make sure, is it cool if I keep my girlfriend on the side once we get married? <laughs> you think that marriage would hold up? Yeah. No. Some of you are wondering why your marriage is going down right now. You got a girlfriend on the side and maybe you haven't slept with her, but you've got an emotional relationship going on. There's some flirting going on, some texting going on. And you're not fully committed. You're wondering, why isn't it working? Are you fully committed? You've got to fully commit. And just like a marriage in your life, you've got to fully commit to whatever it is you decide to do because until you fully commit, like Paul says, you'll never have the discipline to do it. You've got to, you've got to just say, that's it. I'm fully committed. And there's this thing called a grand gesture. A guy named um, Cal Newport laid this out. And he said, if you look at people who did great things in life, they came to a moment where they said, I'm going to do something radical that's going to push me over the threshold to where I don't go back. So what I did for myself when it came to the writing journey is I said, I'm going to start every Monday writing a 400 word blog. And I don't care if anybody reads it. Well, at first I cared. Now I don't. I was like, I'm going to write a 400 word blog. And I started doing it every Monday. And if I didn't do it, I beat myself. Not literally. I'd be like, oh, I didn't do the Monday blog. And I started writing it. That was 10 years ago. I recently went and looked. Somebody counted all of my blogs for me. And he goes, do you realize you have almost a thousand blog posts? 400,000 words I've written over the last 10 years. 400 words at a time oftentimes on Monday morning at 4 a.m. so I could post it and, not, and still make my, my 7 a.m. deadline on Mondays. But I set a deadline for myself. Every Monday I'm going to write. And I have amassed a huge number of, and some of them are really horrible. I went back and read some of them. I'm like, man, I was a bad writer back then. And I deleted them. But <laughs> it's the beauty of the internet. Bing, delete. But here's the thing. I did it and I disciplined myself. My grand gesture is Joel. Every mor Monday morning at 7 a.m., you're going to send out a blog. And then I made it even more commitment. I started asking people if they would subscribe to the blog, and I would send them the blog. And now that list, we're up in about 5,000 people get that every Monday morning. And, but it, it, but it, was, uh, uh, it wasn't an overnight success. In fact, there are no overnight successes. If you ever see somebody that looks like an overnight success story... They're not going to last long or they're not actually an overnight success story. I have some friends that really, their, their ministry really took off and somebody's like, you're an overnight success. And they're like, yeah, 10 year overnight success story. Your overnight success story is going to take years to build, but it starts when you fully commit to it and you say, all right, I'm doing this thing. And I'm not going to keep a girlfriend on the side, not literally, but figure, well, don't, don't do it literally either, right? But I'm going to, this is going to be like a marriage, this commitment I'm making to this thing. I'm not going to dabble anymore, right? We say that we're like, well, I'll just start eating low fat things if I'm going to, you know, lose some weight. Nope, that doesn't work. You got to do way more than that. You're going to have to read some books about how your body type works. You're going to have to consult with some experts because everybody's body type is different. And one person's formula won't work for you. And you're like, well, I tried that diet and it didn't work. Well, try another one. When Emily was trying to figure out her health stuff, she read like six different books and each one of them gave her a little bit of a tool to help figure out what it is she needed to do in her body. First, she cut out gluten. Then she learned she had to cut out things called, uh, well, there's all sorts of things she had to cut out. Dairy, nightshades. Basically, she can only eat air now. But, <laughs> but here's the thing. She learned a little bit from each book and she had to keep exploring and she would do a diet and it would help a little bit, but it wouldn't solve everything. So she would do a little bit more researching. She read a book called blood, Eat Right for Your Blood Type, then the Hormone Diet. Then she read another book about something called AIP. And, and here's the thing. She's feeling better now than she's felt in ever, 10, 15 years. But it was because she fully committed to, I'm going to heal my body no matter what it takes. If you are ever in the Seguin area, 
come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.